Well, let's go over this assignment. And uh, I'll let you guys do your shop work. And we'll get going. This was the LG washer, and you had the service manual for service for this model. What two things in 7 1 should be done before performing service? Let's go to 7 1. Did I pass it? Oh, there's two. You passed it, so that's installation. Seven. You haven't passed it yet. That's five. Here we go, seven one. Before performing service, be careful electric shock when disconnecting parts while troubleshooting the voltage of each terminal. 110, 120 volts AC and DC when the unit's plugged in. So, you know, just going over safety, that's the only reason why I brought that one question out. If you're gonna do a voltage test, which is what I recommend that you do 99% of the time when you're troubleshooting is doing voltage, because voltage allows you to test an entire circuit when you're ohming parts out you know, you're, you're going all over the machine. Like if you're doing a dryer, you got thermostats in the back, you got thermostats in the front, you got control timer up top. You have to take the whole machine apart. Sometimes you can pick a spot in the diagram where you could go right to one part. And if you got voltage there, you've eliminated four or five parts already that you have to test. So voltage testing is going to speed up your diagnostics as long as you know how to read the diagram and you know if I'm at these two points on the diagram and I have voltage what does that mean because we've talked about this before when we're doing voltage test we're checking an entire circuit multiple parts up to that point that we're testing the wires the switches whatever if we're doing an ohms test we're only testing one little part in an entire circuit and then that doesn't rule out you could test every single part and have a broken wire somewhere in your machine and unless you ohm out every wire, it's gonna take you an hour to find everything. So that's why I highly recommend when we're doing testing that we wanna test here. Now the second question, I'm not gonna go back and forth unless I have to, is um, what steps must you perform to enter in diagnostics? Almost all LGs, you press the spin speed and soil level button, hold them down and press power. When you do so, everything should light up, and then you press the start pause button to advance to each step as you're testing, and these are all the, the steps down here. So that was the first two, right? Yeah. Let's go here, what does number three say? Customer calls for service on their washer. They said that the clothes are extremely wet at the end of the cycle, and there is water remaining inside the tub. Uh, how many times, it should be times, must you press the start pause button to make this test? So really it's like the step or whatever to get into that. So if we look here, what are we testing? 11. Why are we testing 11? Yeah, by the complaint that the customer states, the clothes are wet at the end of the cycle, there's water in the bottom of the tub. So this is why diagnostics is very good. Uh, and talked with you just the other day about it, that on a mechanical machine, you can turn the dial to spin drain. You can turn the dial to fill with water. You can turn it to agitate. But if you wanted that drain to run on a mechanic or electronic machine, you'd have to wait for it to go through the whole cycle where it fills and wash and agitate for 10, 15 minutes before it drains the first time. And you know, you don't be standing in the customer's house waiting for it to send power. And also you don't know, you see the timer going, but it doesn't turn on the light says drain. It may turn on the light say rinse or whatever cycle, but it, it doesn't tell you that part's on. So by going into diagnostics and pressing these buttons all the time, you know that you're in step 15 or 11 in this case because the display will tell you and it's going to turn that on. What's that water level frequency 2565? What is that? Uh, 
Is that how many times it measures it per second? No. no. Good guess, but it. Water level frequency? Because this machine has a water level control that is not a water level switch. Most washing machines have a single pull double throw switch. When the machine's empty, the switch is down here and it's sending power to the water valve. And when the machine fills up, it sends power to the motor for washing or something like that. On this particular machine, it's based on water level frequency. The water level switch still looks like a water level switch where it has a hose connected to it and the air pressure created by the water in the tub pushes air up to it and as it moves, it moves a piece inside which changes the frequency of the voltage. And that frequency is measured by the board and it turns around and knows how much water is inside of there. So we're not actually sending oh. power through the switch to the motor or to the water valve. The board is just testing the switch, watching what's going on. Where on a regular washer, the water flows through the water level switch and then goes to the water valve. And when it moves, it stops sending power there. This one, the water frequency tells the board, hey, it's at 25. And the board says, okay, we're full and stop running. So it communicates to the board and then the board turns it off. It's almost like a thermistor kind of thing where a thermistor tells the board the temperature and then the board stops heating or stops cooling based on what the thermistor is telling it. And that's what this frequency is on this unit. Any questions on that one? No? Um, number four, this is a multi-part question. Customer states that the washer is not working. And FE is appearing in the washer display. So you got the letters FE. And it, but they hear something running. So they see FE, but they hear something running. What would trigger the FE error code? So let's go to the error codes. So we go here and FE is number flow. Number flow. Number four. <laughs> I read the word flow. Uh, that's the overflow error. What does that mean, overflow error? Water overflow? Um, well, it's like the there's too much water and it's going in somewhere. But how does it how does it trigger that error? Like does it trigger that from too much water? In the well, water water like, water's overflowing. The water level frequency is over two thirteen. Yeah, if that needs display, yeah. the drain pump will operate the drain water automatically. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, if you're not using the machine and the water valve is leaking, like sometimes water valves on washing machines, when they get old, they get debris inside of them and the valve doesn't close. So they're dripping or they're filling up when you're not using the machine. Some of these machines, even if you're not using them, the water level control will detect that there's water in the tub and automatically turn the drain pump on to prevent water from going into the home. But it's not notifying the customer unless they walk up and see this error code on there. So an overflow error like on some dishwashers, some dishwashers have a pan in the bottom and they have a little sensor right off the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. So if the dishwasher is leaking water and the water fills up the pan a little bit, the the bless you the 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 sensor creates a path through the water from one pin to the other and the board says hey we're leaking water underneath the dishwasher and sometimes the customer will never know because it's going under the kitchen cabinets it's not coming out like out in the middle of the kitchen where they see it so this would stop the machine and the machine would pump out and shut itself down electrolux had that sensor in there some other manufacturers have like a float in the bottom, little piece of styrofoam to a switch, and if water gets in there, styrofoam hits it. Now some washing machines, like the Whirlpool Duet, had a flow sensor or a flow meter, and it was a little tiny wheel that went from the water valve to the dispenser. So what happens is, as the machine's filling up, the little wheel's spinning, and the board will determine gallons per minute based on how fast it's running. Now, it still uses a water level control to stop the water from coming in. 
But what if the water level control was bad? This flow meter would be a backup that told the board, hey, I've been running for a long time. And then the board says, yeah, you've been running for a long time. Let me check the water level sensor. Water level sensor says we still don't have water in the machine. What if you got a cracked tub? Where's that water going? On the floor, the water level switch is never gonna cycle off and the flow meter is gonna keep running. So it works as a backup so that it prevents the machine from running and make it any more of a mess than it has to. Any questions on that? So that was the first part of the question. Let me see if I can put them side by side. How about that? Let me get my, my mouse here. Do this one here. And we'll take this one and we'll do this. Close that out. Okay, so now we got these two side by side. All right, so what was triggered the FE error code? The FE error code is triggered by the water level sensor either you're saying there's too much or the machine's running too long, knowing that water's coming in may trigger it if the water level switch isn't satisfied that there's enough water in there. What would the pressure switch display? What would you see uh, if, if, if that error was happening? FE. FE, which is basically the same question. But that's what would the customer would see. So if a customer calls you out for technical support and you have an idea what machine they're working on, you might want to ask them, hey, is there anything on the display? Do you see anything there that might indicate a problem so that, you know, you want to take and triage or pre-diagnose a machine before you go out there? Because maybe based on the complaint, you automatically know, oh, it's this part. Let me make sure I pick one up and take it with me on the job so I get that complete the first time. You've got to make your most money on your first time complete. So when a customer is calling you and telling you they need service, you want to be able to give educated questions, but you also have to talk down, not down to a customer, but down to their level where they understand you. You say, oh, uh, did you hear any noises? Did you see something? Was it in a specific cycle that you had this problem? So that you could use to help triage the problem when you're ready to go out. Because they don't have to be on diagnostic. The, the, the error code will come up. So the error code on machine. most machines will pop up once an error is found. Not when you go into diagnostics and you see the FE. Yeah. Now there are other machines that the error code pops up, but it doesn't happen all the time. So you'd have to go in and look at the memory of errors that was built into the machine. Now, if you go to someone's house and there's three or four errors that pop up in the control board as you're working on the machine, a lot of times I recommend is you clear those error codes and try to run the machine to get it to duplicate an error code. Because sometimes an error code might be old and a technician already came out and changed a part that fixed that problem. But the error code was never removed. A lot of these machines have had error code peers and you fix the part, you would think, okay, the error code's gonna go away because the part's fixed. Sometimes that's not happening. It'll store it in a memory until you erase it, okay? So you, sometimes you have to clear the error code and then if it comes back, you know that that problem still exists. Um, what did they hear running? The drain pump. The drain pump's trying to prevent the house from getting flooded. So if it got too much water in there, it's going to go. So based on this, did the water level frequency go up or go down? Went up. Went up. So the water level frequency goes up when it's filling with water? Yeah. And some of them, they go down. Okay. So you need to know. We need to look at the water level switch. So let's, let's do a quick... Uh, search here. Oh, sorry. In, in, in this case, it tells you. Uh, huh? In, on this one, it tells you high. Yeah, high I did. Yeah. Like I hinted at it at the little thing. It tells you it's greater than 213. Yeah, that. Let's take a look at something for a second. 
Water level. There's 24 of them, so. What, how to check water level frequency. Page 17, I think we were there, weren't we? Okay, so if you were checking the, the, the water level switch, you could, you could put your meter just on frequency. You could check the frequency yes, coming, you could. coming off of it. But sending back. But the thing is, though, is that mm -hmm. on the display, when you go into diagnostics, mm -hmm. it'll actually give you the frequency. Right. Whirlpool does, mm -hmm. LG does too. Mm -hmm. On the water level switch, when you're mm -hmm. doing the water fill test, yeah. it'll give you the frequency. Now, as the machine's mad. filling up, you'll see the numbers changing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see someone. In this case, to... it said if it's greater than 215, yeah. then you have a problem. Okay, so look here. When the frequency of water level is lower than 22.9 kilohertz, it can be canceled. When the temperature side top, no, that's not it. Um, I thought that that's the information I was looking for. So here, the water level frequency on this one is 25 to 65, not 213. So these are the numbers that should be during a regular test. Okay? So, for example, displaying 241, water level frequency is 241 kilohertz. Right? So that's just, just be aware of that. That's and not 24.1. Where is that? The same thing you read. That that oh, that's 241 24 kilohertz, but this was 241 times 1 kilohertz, or so 0.1 kilohertz. Um, Customer states, LE error appears on the display. What sensor would it fail to cause this? And then where would that sensor be located in the machine? The hog sensor. It's what? The hog sensor. Okay, so let's see here. Hall sensor, LE. Locked motor error. What is a locked motor error? I don't think the motor's not running. The motor's locked up. They won't turn. Okay? So that's a locked motor error. The connector to the motor harness is not connected. The electrical contact, the motor harness there, the hall sensor is out of order or defective. The hall sensor is located on the motor. This motor is one of those big ceiling fan kind of motors. You'll see it's got a bunch of coils all the way around. And attached to that motor is a little piece called a hall sensor. Some of the newer machines now no longer use the hall sensor. They actually use the motor frequency and, and when the motor's running to determine speed and direction. But the hall sensor is a communication from the motor to the uh, board, how fast the motor's going and its rotation, uh, whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. And the reason why it's called Hall Sensor is because the guy who invented it, his last name was Hall. Um, the water heater is not working. What connector, wire colors, and pin location would you use to test the heater from the board? And what resistance value should you get? So let's go to the schematic. I think it was up here, right? This is W, what, what number were we, we on? 22, this one here, right? 22, 7, 7, 8, yeah. So let me zoom in on this diagram a little bit. So we're looking for the heating element, right? Yeah. So what plug, if you were telling me over the phone, hey, I need you to check voltage coming off the board to the heater or resistance of the heater, how would you tell me? Because normally plugs on the board is plug one, pin two and three, or whatever. Um, they don't have that here, do they? I think this says RP. What's RD? RP, I think. It's, RD. it's RD, RD, which is yeah. it's the red plug. But look over here. What do we got here? It's another red plug. A red plug to the motor. Right. So how do you distinguish the difference between the two? Oh, why? Well, how many wires do I have on this one? You got three. I got three, blue, red, yellow. How many do I have on the other one? Two. Yellow, red. So you're gonna tell them to check yellow, red. We can check 120 volts coming off the board. We can ohm it out 
What does it have in series with it? The walking meter. That That's a fuse. Mm. So um, if that fuse fails, it's internal and has to be replaced with the element. It's inside the dotted line showing you there's a fuse with that heater. Okay, but what resistance value do we get? It doesn't show you the resistance value, does it? 10 to 30 on another sheet. 30 on another sheet. But what sheet? On the, on the diagnostic the, sheet. Yeah. Tells you which of it's between 10 and 30 ohms. Yeah, yeah red, if you go red in and here. Yellow lines. If you go in here, you could check it. It tells you how to test the components. <coughs> I think I went too far, didn't I? Where did you guys see it? So I don't have to go searching for it? It, it showed it right, right where the diagnostic actually was. Here? There's a test that says check heater. Yeah. Not in that. There's a test further down where it explains what test to make. Okay. Further down? Oh. Let me just see if it's there. I didn't memorize it where it was, so. Yeah, in that whole series of things there, you go down, there's a heading for the What heater. was the error code? Do we have an error code for the heater? See, that's no power, vibration, no wires. Way down, almost to the end. Yeah. Heating without water. Go down, one more. Oh, that's heating without water. One more. Drain malfunction. Then you get to the heater. Heater trouble. There you go. So right here, and again, look, it's telling you between pin two and three, which is that yellow and red wire, but it's not telling you the color of the wire is here. So you have to go to the diagram and figure out which plug, find the heater, find out which plug and which two wires, and that's approximate resistance. But of those same two pins, I would recommend before you even do anything is go ahead and check voltage first. Why check resistance? I want to know if the board's sending power. If the board's sending power and the heater's not working, what am I going to do? I'm changing the heater. So that's what you were telling me earlier. So you could flip, like I said, for example, that washer I'm working on now, you flip it and you find those particular pins on the actual board. Board. Check voltage coming off if because otherwise you got to check the heater on, on that machine. You have to take the top off, you take the controls off, you have to remove the boot, take the front door off, now get down to the heating element to check voltage to the element. So I would get the same. I could do the same test on top. Right, which is what it tells you to do first. It says do power on, check 120 volts, and, if, and then you can go down and do ohm if you want. Yeah. And, and look, they're physically showing you Weird. here, yeah. but this is not the water heater plug. This is 120 to the machine. Do you really need to make that test? Mm, off the wall. Mm -hmm. That no, that might be the yeah, heater plug because I think he, he, I think incoming yeah. power is on this plug here. Right. Main power board assembly. It says check the two terminals for 120 volts. Yes. So if you've got 120 volts there, that's probably that same yeah. point. So same thing since that part that I was telling you about. And I ohmed it out, and it will OL. If I did the volt test on that up top, instead of going all the way to the bottom, it would give you 120 volts. And at that point, you say, I have no heat, but I have voltage coming off the board. And looking at the diagram, there's no other components in that circuit but the heater. You say, well, yeah, there's a fuse, but the fuse and the heater are considered one part. You don't order the fuse separate from the heater on this unit. So, and that's why I had the dotted line say those two are one part. So if either one of those failed, you just change the whole assembly. Okay? Um, the testing the motor that is not working, what is the resistance in the motor and how do you test it? So I think motor not working was up there, right? Go back to RD this time with one of three pins. No, I guess it was down. It's like the second to last test on right the whole series, right? Checking the motor. So 
If you look at this here, that's the motor. It looks like I said a giant ceiling fan kind of thing. These are the three pins on the motor. We can do that from the board, right? Yep. That was the other red plug that had the white, red, yellow, or whatever those three colors were. This little piece here, do anybody know what that piece is? It's right here. It has another place for another plug. Isn't that the thing for the hall sensor? That is the hall sensor. Remember I asked where is it located? It's located and it can come off and go right onto the motor. It can be replaced separate from the motor. It just clips on. Okay? So it'll pick up as the motor rotates. It has a sensor that'll pick up a pulse from the motor. So one to two, two to three, and three to one, we have between five and 15 ohms. On this motor, it's a delta. We call it like a three-phase motor. It has three separate windings. All three of them read the same thing. It's like our inverted compressors on our refrigerators. They have the same uh, setup on the motor with three-phase winding. It uses an inverter to convert AC to, to, the, to the motor and it runs off of a frequency drive, and that is how the motor runs, okay? So if those windings are good and the motor don't work, is that a problem? The problem is most likely what? My board or my hall sensor. Okay, we can check the hall sensor through diagnostics. Uh, if the motor resistance is good, what do you replace? If it's bad, what do you replace? So well, basically, I just answered that question. If the resistance is good, change the board. Possibly the hall sensor. You got to test that. If the resistance is bad, change the motor. That's the answer to that question. Okay? Yeah. On page 42 shows a parts breakdown of all the part numbers. Hey, so isn't it said that um, just as long as the motor is humming, it's usually working? No, because if two windings are good and one's not, wouldn't the motor hum? Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, so, yeah, uh, having the motor humming would tell you that there is power, but it doesn't tell you if the motor is good or not. Okay, so here's our pump. Which one of them is our recirculation pump? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right. How did you get that? Because you said it. Because I said it? Because it said it. Where did it say it? So I got the one on the left. <laughs> he, he, are, he must have already read it. <laughs> yeah, because it said it in there. And it had a picture of it. And then this part is... I can, I can tell just by looking at that picture. I which one is the recirculation pump. pump and which one is the drain pump? Yeah. The drain pump. So, because yeah, they're just using the same plastic housing and there's one on the left, one on the right. Correct, but how would I know which one's the drain which pump? Which is which? You have to go look at each model separately from some kind of parts database. But I, I'll show you how easy it was for me to figure it out just by looking at the picture. I went to direct and I looked um, at the model and the model tells me it was 340 unless I read it wrong. Yes, what were you saying? Mm. How? <laughs> <laughs> These two ports right here. Those two ports? Those are the output ports where the pumps are pumping to. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. Notice how that one part is actually larger than the other port. Yeah. Okay, that is on purpose. The larger port is to drain the water out of the washing machine. The smaller port runs up to the detergent and bleach and fabric softener dispenser and we don't want to run a big huge hose because we'll have a mess with all that water coming out. So we use a smaller hose to pump that water up to like the rinse aid or the, uh, I'm sorry, fabric softener, rinse aid is dishwashers. Fabric softener or the bleach dispenser or something like that. So the smaller hose is for recirculation, the larger hose is for draining the water. I just know that from being familiar with machines. But how you looked it up, going to Sears Parts Direct or some other parts place, finding that pump based on the model given to you, and then looking at it, and you can order those motors separately instead of changing the whole pump assembly as a complete unit. You just want to make sure they are different part numbers, and if you don't have the right part number, you know, you could make a mistake. Now, but what if 
the technician before you ordered it, you got the part to put on. Now you're looking at them and say, okay, I got the motor, but they look the same. Which one do I change? And I could just look at the hoses on the pump and try to figure that out. Any questions? No? That was 